Section 18.5 is a review of spectroscopy. Of the ketones and aldehydes. For IR spectroscopy, for both ketones and aldehydes, we see the carbonyl peak, very easily detected, at about 1700 wave numbers, depending on what kind of substituents might be attached to the carbonyl group. Now, there are a lot of different compounds that have carbonyl groups in them, the ketones and aldehydes and carboxylic acids and esters. So you learn to not just look for the presence of the carbonyl group, but also the presence or absence of other functional groups in the IR, like for example, the absence of the, the um, alcohol group in conjunction with the presence of a carbonyl group will let us know that we don't have carboxylic acid, but do have a ketone. If we have an aldehyde, one of the ways we can distinguish it from a ketone is the peaks that appear around 2700 and 2800 due to the carbon hydrogen stretching of the carbon sorry the hydrogen that's attached directly to the carbonyl group that bond right there in NMR The carbonyl group is very deshielding. And this is going to be the case for both proton and carbon NMR. The closer the carbons or protons are to the carbonyl group, the more deshielding we'll see. So, for example, a compound like this, we're going to see the most deshielding the positions that are alpha to the carbonyl group and again this is going to be the case whether it's proton or carbon NMR so if we're doing proton NMR those protons are going to be the ones that are furthest downfield most deshielded if it's carbon NMR same thing uh, remember that when we have an aldehyde that proton that, that's attached to the carbonyl group shows up all the way down around 10 parts per million in the proton NMR and that's pretty much all we have to say about NMR. For a mass spec, not a whole lot that we can talk about. Um, this isn't review, this is, this is new stuff, we haven't talked about this yet. With ketones, the preferred site of fragmentation or cleavage is between the carbonyl group and an alpha carbon on both sides. Actually, it's going to break in both places. We will say that that's the preferred cleavage. So we're going to see a pretty significant peak due to the fragment that comes out of that cleavage, which is going to be a, a cation that looks like that. And that is uh, heavily detected. If you know that you have a ketone, Knowing that this is the preferred cleavage can help you deduce the structure if you are trying to use mass spec to figure out what the structure is. And that's pretty much all that we need to review for uh, spectroscopy. I'm not going to do any steady questions for that.